In this video, we'll learn about PBR texturing workflow with the standard surface material in Octane for Cinema 4D. So maybe you have downloaded an asset online that comes with PBR ready textures and you want to know how to use those textures within the standard surface material. Hey folks, welcome to MoGraph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to Octane for Cinema 4D. It's a massive 20 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Octane for Cinema 4D thoroughly. Make sure to check it out, the link is in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified about our latest videos. I have already downloaded this plastic box asset from Quixel Mega Scans and it comes with a bunch of PBR textures. The download link for this asset is saved in this annotation tag that is applied to this null called Mega Scan download links. Go ahead and download the asset so you can follow this video as the assets including the textures won't be provided with the project files. Let me show you the asset on the Mega Scans website. We want to get the same look here in Octane. I have downloaded 4K textures. Let me show you the downloaded asset on my computer. So here we have a bunch of FBX files and all the textures. Load the FBX that has LOD0 in its name as it is the highest poly version and then make sure to use the normal map for that particular LOD which is this normal underscore LOD zero. If you used other LODs from the FBX files make sure to use the corresponding normal map for that LOD. And then we have the albedo or base color texture specular roughness and displacement map even though the displacement map is black and does not have any info and we won't be using it i have saved the textures for this asset in this plastic box folder in the text folder of the project files folder i've just renamed them a tad to make them more recognizable so here we have an albedo or base color texture a specular texture, a roughness texture, and a normal texture. If we use these textures properly, we can get the same look that we saw in the preview at the Megascans website. So let's go ahead and do that. When I create a new standard surface material and assign it to this plastic box 01 geometry, Open the material in the node editor and start a render. Now select the material, increase the base weight to 1, and make sure the diffuse BRDF model is set to maybe Lambertian. For now, let's set the base color to a dark gray with the RGB values around maybe 40, 50. As it is apparent from the render and we can check out the wire pass as well in the live viewer, this is a very low poly model and we need to add more polygons to it. Let's add an octane object tag to the plastic box 01 geometry. Then come to the subdivision group tab and let's add just one subdivision level to it. Now the model looks better in the render. So from now on, you just load the textures and connect them to the proper inputs. So let's start with the base color, connect an image texture node to the base color input. And from the plastic box folder, load plastic box albedo texture. And as we are in ACES, change the color space to sRGB. If the asset had a metalness texture, you would connect it to the metalness input under the base layer of the standard surface material. This asset does not have a metalness texture. Next, let's come down to the specular inputs. So after albedo, you normally want the specular roughness texture. So let's connect an image texture node to the specular roughness input. And load this plastic box roughness texture. Now 
change the color space to non color data and we can change the type to float as this is a grayscale texture to save some VRAM. Make sure the specular weight and color are set to one and white. If the asset had a specular map, you can connect it to the specular color input. This asset has a specular map. Let's duplicate the roughness texture. Load this plastic box specular texture and connect it to the specular color input of the material. Now we can add any normal bump or displacement mapping. This asset only comes with normal map. The displacement texture does not have any info and there is no bump map. So let's come down to the geometric properties input. Find the normal input. Copy the roughness texture. Because this is a normal map that has R, G and B channels, make sure to change the texture type back to normal and now connect it to the normal input of the material. And that is the process. Very simple. Now we have a very similar result to the preview in the Megascans website. So just connect the texture to the right inputs and make sure specular weight and base weight are set to one. And if the asset didn't have a specular map to be connected to the specular color input, make sure the specular color is set to white. So that was the hard way of doing it. Let me show you the easier way as well, because you can simply drag and drop all your uh, PBR textures on a material and ask Octane to connect the textures to the right inputs. And to do that, first open up the Octane settings window go to the settings tab and then notes tab come down to this pbr textures drop down set the pbr textures mode to auto detect plus connect in this mode when you drag your textures onto the standard surface material octane will automatically detect that these are pbr textures and connects them to the right inputs of the material and then in this pbr tags field the proper naming convention is given. For example, the name of the diffuse texture or the base color texture has to end with underscore color, underscore diff, underscore diffuse, underscore albedo, underscore base color. The specular texture has to end with underscore specular, underscore spec, and the roughness texture name has to end with underscore roughness, underscore rough, or underscore gloss. And the same thing goes for other textures like displacement, bump, normal, metallic, and so on. So you need to make sure your PBR textures has these naming conventions. Otherwise, Octane won't be able to recognize them. Now, if I take a look at the plastic box folder in the text folder, you can see all the textures that I want to use for the plastic box. Uh, here we have the base color texture that ends with underscore albedo. The specular texture ends in underscore specular. The roughness texture ends in underscore roughness. The normal texture ends in underscore normal and the displacement texture ends in underscore displacement even though the displacement texture does not have any information and we can ignore it now let's get back to octane create a new standard surface material and assign it to the plastic boxes open it up in the node editor like the previous material go to the base color let's change the Diffuse BRDF model to Lambertian and set the base weight to 1. Now in the plastic box folder, select the albedo, the specular, the roughness, the normal and the EXR displacement texture and simply drag them onto the standard surface material in the node editor. Now we can get back to Cinema 4D. You notice the albedo texture is automatically connected to the base color input. Specular and roughness maps are connected to the specular color and specular roughness inputs. The normal map is connected to the normal input and the displacement map is connected to a displacement node. And then the displacement node is connected to the displacement input of the material. Right now, the displacement node is empty, so it does not do much. But in case you have an actual displacement map, you need to select the displacement node and adjust the displacement mapping as we learned how to do it in the displacement mapping video in this section. Now, if you take a look at the render, the material looks exactly like the material we created manually.
So that is the PBR workflow with the standard surface material in Octane. See you in the next one. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check out our premium CGI and rendering courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Maya, Arnold, Octane, Corona, V-Ray, Redshift and much more. See you in the next one.